a, um, a video for what? Neutrino iode or something like this. Um, I'm going to explain, and for everybody, I'm going to, but it's addressed to, to him. I'm going to explain how morality and ethics can come just from the individual and society, the definitions of individual and society. But I'll tell you in advance that you're not going to like, um, you're not going to like this answer. Now, one reason, oh, and by the way, I, I have, you have, <laughs> you have called, you have called me dense and stupid and a madman so many times, you know, I've decided that in this video, I'm going to take the petty pleasure of showing you no respect. Now, you're not going to like it, what I have to say, for, for various reasons. One, I don't think you can conceive it. I think you'll be confused. I don't think you have the necessary foundations, the necessary pillars on which to understand what I'm going to, to describe to you. You're going to be confused at the end. But you probably won't know that because you're going to take in a misconception that really is very common. I'd say more often than not, people have this misconception. And the misconception is that we bring objective criteria uh, to the problem of creating a relativist or subjective definition of something. So when we define knowledge, say, relativistically, and I'll define knowledge relativistically. And then uh, the objectivist says, well, that's not knowledge. Because they're using an objective, you know, expectation. Well, that's how it's going to be with ethics and, and morality. You know, some people want to know that they're absolutely morally right when they make a moral judgment. I don't expect that. I still want a moral system. But I don't want to... Um, to be proven absolutely right. I just want a system that helps me decide what the right thing to do is as best that I can. So, uh, you know, I define ethics and morality in a pragmatic sense. These are systems that tell us what we ought to do. In the case of ethics, what we minimally should do, you know, the least we could do um, to be in the clear. And, and morality tells us sort of the most we can do, you know, how we can get ahead and, and actually do good beyond the minimum. And, and in that range from ethics to morality is really everything that in some sense or other we ought to do. Okay, so a system like that it has a functional purpose, okay, and I can satisfy that functional purpose with relativistic morality. Now let's start with something pretty, uh, a straightforward um, moral statement. It is wrong to kill an infant. Okay, no wait. That actually is controversial. Let me, let me correct it to a less controversial form. It is wrong to kill an infant human. Now if some, something is is attacking my my infant, my baby, then I don't believe I need a moral system to argue that I am that it's morally incorrect to kill an infant and therefore I then am free to act. I, I don't believe that. I believe that I am ironically, I believe that I'm actually bound morally to protect my infant. <coughs> Now, morality def is a way also of judging our behavior so that we can take our, what, we, what we've judged and take this into account um, next time we act. And a moral judgment is inherently about things that have happened in the past and trying to figure out if they were right or wrong. Now, you know, if you're talking about, like, let's say, stealing is wrong, well... The reason we have that is because we have the benefit of our ancestors' knowledge. And so if, if a morality tells us 
after the fact what behaviors are right or wrong and what we ought to do in the future because of our ancestors experience thieving has already been defined it might be before I've thieved that I'm thinking about the question but it's not before the concept of thieving has been repeated so many times that it's a very clear concept to us that's the benefit of our ancestors experience and I might not ever thieve at all because what to me would be a first time thieving would, in the history of man, the level at which ethics and morality you know, pertain, that would be a continuation. My first act would be a continuation, culturally, of thieving. So, with the morality being what you ought or, and ought not do, using past experiences as the source material for, for these judgments, you know, moral system will tell me never to steal, learning the experiences of someone else. Now, it's morally wrong to kill an infant human, I can argue, to another human. You can see that if someone else is human, I have the beginning of a, of a strong argument. From being human and being their cousin, being that we're cousins and family, I could come up with a pretty compelling argument that you shouldn't kill your own family and so on and establish that as a human, you know, you have a frame of reference, like it or not, that you are a human as a human and I can make a moral argument. But if an alien is coming and attacking my infant, I can't make that moral argument. I mean, we eat the infants of other animals. Uh, why couldn't an alien come morally and, and eat our child? If I did want to make a moral argument, I would have to find a common frame of reference with the alien. For example, that maybe as living beings, they reproduce as well. So they have family. Maybe I can make an argument uh, based on the fact that we both have a concept of family. That's important to us. So I might have a moral argument, but... That would still just be another frame of reference, a yet a still different kind of alien or animal, and it might not pertain. And of course, I don't really have to go to aliens because if a lion is attacking your infant baby and eats it, we don't consider that a moral wrong. Uh, we don't have to consider it a moral wrong in order to kill that animal that has attacked our, our infant and eaten it. We, we know that represents a danger to us, and, and we feel uh, we have principles that we can defend ourselves, and each of us has the right to survive. And this ultimately is where I think our basic ethics will come from, our relativist ethics, and where our ethics that we do have actually come from, is this idea that every person wants to survive. I want to survive, and I envision that other people and other animals want to survive. And on top of that, I feel it is in my best interest to cooperate with other humans, my cousins, uh, by respecting that they want to survive and that I want them to survive and that I will, at the very least, you know, not do anything to uh, intentional merely to you know, impinge on their ability to survive. So that's the foundation of a relativistic ethic. It's based on our relationships, because relativity is about relationships, and that's what you should assume right away. The fact that we are all related as cousins is the basis for a, a moral and ethical system between us. And the difference between the ethics and morals will simply be whether we're talking about the minimum you can do to be considered as to not have, you know, uh, unnecessarily impinged on another person's um, survival and enjoyment of that survival and all the things that entails. And morality where you're supposed to kind of maybe go the extra mile to do the greater good. A greater good being the good of the greater frame of reference, the encompassing frame of reference, which for ethics and morality is pretty obviously at least the society, the culture that you're in. Um, we know about genetics. We know that all human beings now are related. No matter how different they appear, they're very closely related. So I think a community of all humans is 
what we're talking about here. This is where we need to get our ethics right now. It should not be nationalism. It should be uh, a feeling of um, of a world community. That's my opinion. And beyond that, I think even a community of animals, a biosphere. I think our morals should come from a frame of reference that realizes we're part of a biosphere. And that's why I believe we can argue for environmentalism as an ethical and moral uh, imperative. So, as I said, I don't expect that to make much sense to someone like you. But uh, now you got your answer.